Yes, yes. Who do we have with us today? This young man can sing and he has a singing ministry. He is no stranger to the gospel music community, but those that may not know him, you know him after today. His name is Travis D. Crockett. Welcome to the Wake Up Morning Show, my brother. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for having me on this morning. Well, well you know what? I, I'm just going to just straight up just start off with a beef with you, brother. You, you know, no I, I, got a beef with, I got a beef with you already. Uh, What's the beef? I, I want to know, first of all, what part of the country are you in? And is that, is, is, is that a Mercedes or a Bentley that you're driving? Oh, no, 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 not yet. It's on the way. It's on the way. It's on the way. Not yet. Not yet. Ain't no Bentley or no Mercedes. I'm yeah. just in my little fusion. Okay. And what part of the country are you in? I'm in Chicago. Lord oh. Jesus. In oh, Chicago, wait, wait. Let, let, me, yes. let me zoom in because do y'all see this brother? He got his sunroof open. It must be a beautiful day in Chicago because normally I tell you, uh, uh, I tell you that uh, uh, Chicago ain't nothing nice, especially in the wintertime. Now, this is our, this is actually our first 70 degree day that we having today. Oh, wow. look at, wait. And you know what? He reminds me of Smokey <laughs> Robinson. I love it when we're cruising together. You, you, <laughs> you, you know, he, uh, wait a minute. You got those shorts and the flip flops. Yep. <laughs> what? That's how we dress on the West Coast. Yeah, he said it's their first 70 day. All right, brother, we'll get right into this. Right, right. Uh, uh, <laughs> first of all, who is Travis? Yeah. You know, uh, uh, what? Tell us your story. Give us your five-minute dossier. Okay, mom. Well, I'm Travis Dante Crockett. Um, I've been in the music business industry now for 17 years. Wow. Um, I started my first group. Um, it was a Anointed Purpose Corral, um, and that was my first experience. I was 15 years old when I started my group, um, and then. Got older, God gave me a different vision, and, you know, I just set out for it, and the Powerful Voices of Praise was birthed. Uh, it's been a great experience. I did something different. I took people from everywhere that probably didn't have a music background but just loved to sing. Right. Yes, and, you know, yes. We, and we had growth, and, man, it's just been good. And then God let us record um, 2019, right before the pandemic. Wow. Uh, it was an awesome experience um i'm loving the new music and you know everything happened and we got set back but now god said it is the time for the music so we in the midst of releasing our full project will be released later on this year but we just released our new single and it is doing great it will bless you well man i tell you first of all you know um can any good thing come out of chicago I oh, think it, a lot of I, I think that if we start there, oh you know, God. we know the answer to that is yes, yes, yes and yes. more yes. So tell me, yes. how is it to be in a city that's known for choirs <laughs> and known for good music? Uh, known for that, good writers well, and well, musicians. Well, well, did you ever get afraid of of jumping out into the to the ocean of excellence? You know what? No. No, okay. um, I've been around the music industry, like I say, since I was younger. My family is very musically um, inclined and had a lot of connections. Um, my godmother, Brenda. Uh oh, we lost you, man. You went, you, you, yeah, there you go. Uh, you got to unmute yourself. You okay. see, you, you know, what, what happens is folks be trying to call. While you doing your interview, it happened to me before, and and, and just mess I'm up your sure. whole thing. It I happened. Told everybody I was going to interview. It happened. It's to me been before a crazy too. morning. We actually lost my little cousin on you last night, and it's just been crazy. Oh, oh wow! Um, so there's a lot of family calling right. and things. So Whip. it's just been crazy. That's in our prayers. Now, now, my question is: Was it to COVID or to violence? It's to violence. Oh, okay. No. Uh, to you violence. So that's the one thing about Chicago. You know, this violence has gotten really out of control. And that's my prayer every morning is that God would just come do something different yeah. and just give us some real leaders around that yeah. can help guide these young people and, you know, just help get some order back to our city, man. It's been real crazy. So, so uh, um, you know, bar, bar this, let's, let me just first ask you, how are you doing this morning? I'm okay. I'm making it. Okay. I'm making it. I'm making it. God is my strength, and he's my source, so I'm making it. Amen, wow. amen. And, and you were saying about your godmother. Who is your godmother in the industry? Brent, Brenda Joyce Moore. She wrote How Excellent. Oh, yes, I've heard of her. 
Yes. Perfect yes. Grace. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So she wrote that. So she has really been a big influence in my life and, you know, in my music career. So, you know, I, I just say, you know, the city of Chicago does have a lot of great talent. Everybody, you know, have it. But, you know, the one thing that sets us all set apart is that we, first of all, sets us together and united is that we're all doing it for the right reason yeah. for the kingdom of God. Yeah. You know, so, that you know, it's not really too much, you know, a lot. But what sets us apart is that we all bring something different. Right. Now, now being in Chicago, who are some of the other artists that you may have written for or played for? Um, I actually haven't written. Um, the, my album is the CD now. It's my first time actually writing on the album. Awesome. Well, I'm 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 really pleased about that. You know, to express my writing talents. Yes. Um, but I've sung with a lot of good people within the city. Mm -hmm. Um, have connections with them. Um, mm -hmm. from Cosmopolitan to Sweet Holy Spirit. Yes. You know, this goes on. Um, so, you know, like I say, I've had my own for such a long time. You know, I've been really just focused on me. So what what definitive moment or how did you know that this was what you were supposed to do some people do it for the glamour some people do it just because their mama and them did it what let you know that this is something that i need to do to help people and to bless the body of christ you know since i was a kid i actually my first experience with music is when i got to high school i joined i went to thorn ridge high school in Dalton, illinois mm -hmm. and i joined the school gospel choir and the passion and love that came behind it you know, it was just so, I mean, it was just, it was, it was deep down in my heart. And what happened was um, they had to cut some, the budget cuts in the district. Mm -hmm. So they cut the God choir. So that's when I said, you know what, dad, I want to start my own choir. Back then, I'm not going to say it wasn't a vision or a purpose, but I just knew it was something that I loved to do. Right. It wasn't until I started the powerful voices of praise that God really gave me a vision and a purpose to help renew people's minds, to remind people of who he is, yeah. to bring people closer to him and yes yeah, singing is you know a big part of our ministry but we a big outreach ministry we like to do things for the community what what's ever needed in the kingdom is what i want to be able to serve through ministry we're not just an old singing choir right, right. or community choir as mm -hmm. they call them we are a ministry and there's purpose to it that's powerful because we are to go out and compel men and women to god outside of the four walls and many yes. times in music ministry we get so focused in concerts and charting and making records that we forget that the real purpose is to go outside the four walls because there's so many people that are are, are sad that want to give up that are suicidal but the good news of jesus christ through music is so powerful yes it is yes and, it and, is and, and one of the things one of the things that i want to say is that um i well the question i want to ask you is being as young as you were starting your choir what what um, structure did you put in place to literally lead these young people? Well, the thing back then, like I say, I just started. So what happened was, you know, my parents had a big part within my choir when I first started, mm -hmm. of course, because by me still being a minor. Right. And so did the other parents. And that's what kind of kept us because we the anointed purpose actually could have went somewhere. Yeah. I'm just going to be honest. Back then, they were, I mean, we were engagement gauging everywhere everybody wanted us we was traveling you know but to me it clashed when the adults came together so when i got up age and did it, you know i'm still trying to build my relationship with god more right. and it just it wasn't working together it wasn't clicking wow you know my pastor at the time he said you know what travis don't keep going and you not really know what you're doing wow so i set myself down I got deep into my word. I started praying, and God gave it to me. And he gave me my new. He gave me my real purpose. Not saying that was practice. Right. Because I appreciate every experience and every connection that anointed purpose have given me. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I tell people, whether you sing with me now, whether you left, whatever the case may be, you're still always family. Yeah. You're still always going to be connected to Travis D. Crockett. I think that's, I think that's Amen. powerful. Amen. That's powerful. And, and one of the things about it is um, they lean on that. You know, you'll be very amazed. I've been in education now for over 38 years, and wow. I have the same number that I gave when I first started in the industry and, and started doing it. I kept the same cell number so that any time that my former students that have come through my program wanted to get in contact with me, they could. And the craziest thing is when you get a phone call from a person that's now in their 30s, 
uh, and, and they have children, and they come and they want to get advice for their children when you remember when they were children. And you'd be like saying, there's one part that makes you smile, the other part starts saying, wow, you really old now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I understand. I understand that. So tell me about Chicago, growing up in Chicago, in music, doing what you were doing. Um, tell me the things, some of the hurdles that you had to c uh, come over, and then some of the victories with people that you performed with or ministered and shared a stage with. Well, let me say, um, growing up in Chicago, you know, I, I had a very great life. You know, my parents, you know, they, they really made sure that I really didn't, ex I ain't going to say didn't experience, but they kept me grounded in, in the church. Mm -hmm. That's all I do is church. Yeah. Um, grew up in the church, Grady Tabernacle, um, MB Church on in Chicago. And um, that was a family's church. My um, J.B. Sims Jr. was the pastor. And, you know, I grew up there, awesome singing ministry. Um, my grandmother, uh, my dad's mom, you know, she was great friends with a lot of gospel industry people, you mm -hmm. know. So being under Abertina Walker, I remember being young, actually being back in the room while, you know, they get the caravans is getting ready to perform. Wow. And, you know, being able to experience that, like I say, with my godmama, Brenda Moore, writing for Chicago Mass and dealing with, you know, going through, you know, her different things as far as being a writer mm -hmm. in the industry, you know, the steps and the process right. and how to build poor and how to remain respected you know that was one thing that i always strived on for my name you know to always have respect and honor behind it you might not like me what i do you might not like certain things that i do but at the end of the day you're going to respect my my love for god you're yes. going to respect my ministry and what i'm called to do that's awesome yes and, and and that's that's a good foundation um you know these young people need mentors and we thank god yes. that you had them that he had them that i have them because in this time and, and era, these young people want to be stars. It's, it's kind of yeah. leaving. That's all it's about. It's leaving um, being, being ministers for God, and it's more or less what they see on TV and see the glitz and glamour, but they don't know that it's, it's ministry. And in ministry, you're going to have ups and downs. People think because you get saved and give your life to Christ that everything's going to be hunky-dory. That, that's, a, that's, that's a myth. The devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. So he's going to be fighting you, especially when God has a plan and purpose for your life. So that's yeah. a blessing that you had that foundation because you could have went left or right as a young person. Yes, I could have. Yes, I could have. Now, now, I want to ask you if you can help dispel a rumor. He always you got know, rumors. I, I, he always got rumors. I don't know if the rumor is true or not. Um, but could you there, – there's a rumor that you had some form of experience with the Obamas. Uh, since you're from Chicago, is that true or not? Uh, did did you meet him at a coffee shop or something and had a crumpet no, with him? What what was it? No, no, that that's not true. Who said that? <laughs> you, you you mean to tell me that you and the Obamas ain't, ain't hanging together? No. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. It, it's coming. Nope. It's coming. It's it, coming. I'll receive it. You, right, you, right. You, you I'll go, receive they're gonna call you up one day to go right to they 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 institution. And they're going to be like saying, that's a young man that we saw. And we're going to have him come because we done brought every gospel singer to the White House. Oh, yeah. Now we're going to bring our singers from Chicago. And it's coming back. Uh -huh. I, I, hey, coming back. Hey, I receive it. I, I receive it. Okay, so I got to ask my food question. Okay, ask them. Now, if I, if I come to Chicago and everything, and you were going to take both Robert L. Dean and I out to the hottest, best food in Chicago, where would you take us? My house. <laughs> right. and Br 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 wait, 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 Bridget, but who cooking? Bridget who Herker cooking? Tell us that, that, that I'm testimony. cooking. You cooking? Yeah. What you cooking? Whatever you need. I have my own catering business. Uh-oh. What? what? Talk yeah. about that, brother. I have my own catering business. I have my own t-shirt business. Um, God has really just been blessing, actually. Um, I started my t-shirt business in the middle of a pandemic. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm able to move into my first house. Wow. You know, so God has really just been doing some things. Wow. You know, my parents, they are entrepreneurs. My mom has a daycare that's doing awesome. My grandmother also has a daycare. You know, I've come from a, a leadership type of family yeah. mm -hmm. on both sides. Yeah. And they excel with whatever they do. So, you know, I've, I was taught as young, whatever you want to do in life, do it. There's nothing stopping you. have all this open freedom to do exactly what you need to do. So, you know, as a kid. To have the support. 
you know, from my parents and have the support from them, you know, I just, I, I always just take off running. If I have an idea, I'm going to do it. Okay, so as a caterer, uh, have you ever had a request for a chitlin and cheese burrito? Oh, God. No, I have not. I have no, no. And he, no I hope no. he never, I hope he never does. I, I've never even heard of that. Right. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Now, well, you had to ask the question. Right. Now, what are some of the artists that you would love to work with that you have never worked with? Who are some of your your listers that you would want to work with? Um, my biggest one would have to be I love Donald Lawrence. Mm -hmm. uh, he's an he's a idol Everybody's as a writer, as a, as a doctor. There, you know, being a, I, I have so much honor and respect mm -hmm. for Donald Lawrence. Um, so definitely that would be a top. Um, my aunt and some of my family sung with Ricky and New G. So, you know, I've been in around New G. Mm -hmm. um, um, who else I would like? Tamala Man. Oh, yes. Jesus. Yes. Tamala Man. I would love Tamala Man. Karen Clark Sheard. Yes. Um, we sung for Kiara Sheard before, my first group, mm -hmm. you know. So I, I've met a lot of people within the industry, and I can say the people that I have met have been very humble. And, you know, I respect them. I respect their ministry. Right. So I'm going to ask this question. You've been in the game for a long time. What was the funniest on-stage moment you experienced? And you had to compose yourself, but you couldn't stop laughing. Man... I have my, my, my choir, they, they, they're funny. It's like um, before we start singing our original music, you know, um, if they didn't like a song, they didn't sing it right. <laughs> I, and I had this idea, okay, well, you, I don't care if you don't like it, we're going to sing the song, we're going to minister the song, and you're going to sing it till you get it. Right. So they, 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 the first time they jacked up the song, I was like, okay, we're going to sing it again. And um, the second time they jacked up the song, and then the third time, once they found out we were singing the song, they just didn't sing nothing. You know how it works, I was. <laughs> you know we, what? We ain't going to sing. Though, we would like that in the voice of fulfillment. Like, Y'all really been to protest while we in the middle of a minute. <laughs> you know what? We, the choir sing with the recording choir sing, we did the same thing. I'm going to confess 30 years later. We used to do the same thing. If we didn't like a song, we would act like we really couldn't get it. I thought oh we were the only one. God forgive us. The song ever. Wait, wait, wait did, some, did somebody in the choir just sit up there with, with a protest? <laughs> <laughs> they protest. Right. And all it takes is one. Protest. It takes one see, to get the rest see, of them going. That, see, that was see. Speaking, right. You know, that first family. Yeah. Right, right. And, and see, see, I'd have been different. I'd have had some ringers in the audience. And while they was protesting, I'd have been like, uh, I'd have been like point one to come up to replace the other one. <laughs> that there would have been that song. Right. There's a war going on. Right. There would have been a war right, going right, on right. That, right. that day. Now, now, Travis, my question to you is: How did you hook up with this flatfoot singer named Lemmy Battle, Lemmy Barnes uh, Battle? That's yeah, Lemmy Barnes Battles. Um, man, she's awesome. I've been around her pretty much my whole life. Um, you know, with her being in the city and being, I think she's one to me. And I'm not saying that all independent artists is not, but she's one of the most hardworking yes, sir. independent artists that I know. She's a go-getter and just singing around the city of Chicago. And I called her next to be on a song, and she said, yeah. Wow, you you, uh, yes. you, you picked a good one. And, and by the way, she's my cousin. <laughs> she's my cousin. I, I knew it was coming. She ain't anybody cousin. Right. Yeah. Yes, yeah. We, my, fam, my mom's from Arkansas, and she's from Arkansas. Okay. And I, I met her when I was in college down there, and she has been the same since I met her. Yes, okay. she is a hard worker. Okay, so I just want you to understand this. She is truly his cousin, but if you talk to Robert Earl Dean long enough and y'all do your family Travis, history, here we go. you will find out that he your cousin too. Travis. <laughs> you know, I'm going to tell you, I want to oh, explain this, Travis. Travis that, that this in the much. beginning was the word, and the word was with God. And, and then, you know, uh, I really truly believe that he has traced his lineage all the way back to Adam and Eve. Oh, Lord. And everything. So that's why when you talk to him, you're going to be his cousin because he traced his lineage all the way back. Wow. <laughs> that's awesome. That's actually something I want to do. Yeah. Right, right. Whatever. You, you keep going. Cause you well, know, well, you, you, you know, know I just want to say, you know, uh, uh, Travis, you, you his cousin, Just you don't know it yet. You know okay. what I'm saying? If you do your DNA, we you, all, his, 
We you, all wait, relatives in Jesus. If you do your DNA you, in Jesus, you his six cousin third removed from his mama's side. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so let's talk about the single though. This single is a good churchy number. I love it. Yes, yes, yes. Um, actually, it's um it's our second single that we're releasing. Um, it's entitled "My Answer." She has my assistant director Cameron Davis has has wrote this song, mm -hmm. um, and it's a good churchy, good Sunday oh, morning type it. song. You know, and just going through what we went through um, with the whole pandemic, yeah. our answer really has to be a sincere yes. Come on. You know, God took care of us. He said all we had to do was obey the laws of the land. Yeah. That was the word that he gave us. And if you did that, God took care of us. Yeah. You know, I worked through a whole pandemic because I gave God a sincere yes. Yeah. Well, brother, we want you, number one, to tell people how they can get in contact with you, download yeah. your music, Good. and then introduce your song. And we're going to rock it right here on G.O.D. Radio 1. Okay, um, we have our email address is bookingpvop at gmail.com. Um, the phone number is 708-793-8415. Um, we are on Facebook, The Powerful Voices of Praise. Um, and our music is everywhere, all digital outlets. You can go grab it. Um, and, yeah, our new single, yeah, is entitled My Answer is Yes, featuring the one and only evangelist Lemmy Battles from right here on Chicago. Yeah. Right here on GOD Radio 1. Y'all check this yeah, one out. Yeah, check it out. <laughs> 